video on my end, which will certainly not be as good as yours. Look, <laughs> it's TMS. Somebody tweeted, finally, some serious and legit journalism on the show for once. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. That's pretty fun. All right. Well, with one minute to go, uh, I'm going to mute myself, but I'm going to stick around just through the open to make sure everything's awesome, and then I'll disappear behind a little. Yeah, if you need to pipe in and tell me I did it wrong, please have Never. a game. Never. Uh, it's not a problem. There is no wrong. No wrong. There is only right. I am not going to look at myself during any of this, so that helps me do All that. All right. Well, uh, proceed away as you wish. Patreon intro, blah, 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 blah. Okay, here we go. Audio on the side has started. Confirm confirmed. Brian, I can still hear you, right? Yes, you can. Okay, I can totally hear Brian still. If you, as long as you heard me say that. Oh no, we're losing it. Just kidding. <laughs> I hung up on it. <laughs> Couldn't put it past me. Okay, here we go. Let's get this uh, thing started. Thanks everybody for uh, tuning in live. We appreciate it. Let's we'll see if we can't mess this up for Tom. Uh, it begins. Whoa, hold on there, internet. There you go. All right, here we go. It starts in three, two, one. A minuscule portion of the Daily Tech News Show was brought to you by me. Because I went to patreon.com slash acedetect and donated a dollar a month to a podcast that I really enjoy. Won't you join me? <laughs> Hey, look, it's the Daily Tech News Show. The Daily Tech News Show for Wednesday, June 10th. I'm Scott Johnson. Tom is on assignment today, so today's DTNS is brought to you by the morning stream in a really weird way. <laughs> Actually, kind of a literal way. My name is Scott Johnson. I'm here every Wednesday for the Daily Tech News Show, but a guy who is yet to be with me here is a friend who I see all the time on everything else I do, and that's Brian Ibbett. Hi, Brian. Just about, right? Joined at the podcasting hip. Yeah, can't help it. Uh, you that's never hear the words podcasting and hip in the same sentence either. <laughs> Not very often. <laughs> uh, we are we're fresh off our own morning show this morning, and we are here to ruin everything Tom has established <laughs> <laughs> with one fell swoop. Exactly. Um, but I'm excited to be here, and I'm excited to be here with you, man. So uh, should we get to it? Absolutely. All right, let's go right now. <laughs> All right, it is the headlines. Let's get started with headlines. One day after Apple announced a new music streaming service called Apple Music, Spotify closed a massive new round of funding. A lot of massives happening. Mm -hmm. According to the Wall Street Journal, Spotify has raised $526 million from investors, and the company is now valued at $8.53 billion. That's with the B. Mm -hmm. uh, Recode reports Spotify also announced it has more than 20 million paying subscribers in addition to 55 million active users on the free version. Uh, that's up from the 15 million paid subscribers and 60 million total active users the company reported back in January. And we're going to talk a lot more about Spotify in the headlines. I did want to say, or uh, after the headlines, I do want to say this real quick, though. That is what they were trying to do, is get that number to quit being 50 million paid, or 15 million paid and 60 million free, and get it closer to what they have now, and that's really good news for them. But we'll talk about those guys later. Right, right. Uh, Microsoft announced pricing today for the Surface Hub. It's giant 4K multi-touch display designed to replace the whiteboard in your super sleek startup conference room. And Gadget reports that the 84-inch version will cost $19,999 and go on sale in July. There will be a smaller 55-inch version for your smaller conference room for $6,999. Both should ship in early September. Those are really exciting. I think those are super rad. But do we have to do, like, the discount store uh, pricing system here? <laughs> with the 99? Because it sounds like so much less than 20000 right? It really does. I feel like I can finally afford this. <laughs> uh, if you saw the Microsoft Surface Hub and thought, well, that's nice and all. But what I really want to see is Emmy. Well, then Microsoft's got you covered. The company unveiled a 55... I think, I think that's me. Oh, me? Yeah. <laughs> then do you want to see me? Uh, <laughs> and They unveiled a 55-inch mirrored OLED display as well as a 55-inch transparent display. That's pretty rad. That's Ars cool. Technica, uh, Ars Technica reports that Samsung anticipates the displays will be used as, quote, digital signal for retail. Uh, the mirror OLED panel has more than 75% Refle uh, excuse me, reflectance level. That's a word that mm. I've never said until today. No, reflectance. No, I've said it too. <laughs> uh, which Samsung says is, quote, at least 50% higher than mere LCDs 
that are currently for sale. The transparent OLED display is more transparent, letting through 40% of the light versus 10% uh, that is common with transparent is, uh, transparency displays using LCDs. No price was announced. Uh, both displays are paired with Intel's RealSense 3D camera technology, which means someday soon, when you look into the mirror in the dressing room, the mirror will look back at you and it will not be pleased. Oof. I want one of these in my bathroom. Right? Yeah. Dude, I don't uh, know if I want that in your bathroom. <laughs> Uh, Kapersky Lab has has admitted to being hacked. Kapersky Lab CEO, a uh, Kaspersky Lab CEO and founder Eugene Kaspersky, Kaspersky, <laughs> Kaspersky wrote, "We discovered an advanced attack on our own internal networks. It was complex, stealthy. It exploded several zero-day vulnerabilities, and we're quite confident that there's a nation-state behind it." The firm called this attack Duku 2.0. D U Q O Q U. 2.0, named after a specific series of malware called Dooku, uh, not after the count, I guess. Kaspersky mm. explained the situation as a mix of both good and bad news, but claims none of its services have been compromised. Mm. According to the New York Times, the malware was used in a cyber espionage campaign targeting hotels that hosted Iran nuclear negotiations. Wow, that'll, uh, that'll mess with you. I, when you said Dooku, I was thinking Dookie, like the tree in the Zelda <laughs> games. <laughs> Or the, uh, isn't that the one that has the dookie nuts? Or dookie, those are dooku nuts, aren't they? Or deku or dookie. Deku nuts, that's deku. what they are. Is that yeah. it? Okay. It's a deku tree. You, you weren't can't... thinking of Count Dooku? No, I wasn't. I try not to think of that, Count Dooku. You know, his <laughs> lightsaber was bent. Anyway, the Washington Post reports that Elon Musk's quote-unquote other company, SpaceX, guy's got like 20 other companies, mm -hmm. has asked the U.S. government for, for uh, permission to test how orbit satellites uh, would emit internet service from space. The plan calls for 4,000 small and cheap satellites that would beam high-speed internet signals all over the globe. Um, there's stuff like that now, but it kind of sucks, which is, I think, why they're doing this. If the tests go well, the full service could be up and running in about five years. Facebook recently scrapped similar plans, maybe because they don't own their own rockets. I don't know. Brian, would you ever consider? What would be the catalyst for you switching to a, a satellite-based internet service? Um, if the satellites or if the internet service that I have goes down, then I would consider. <laughs> I mean, that's basically it, right? If you can't get, you go with whatever you can a get uh, that's consistent mm -hmm. and to a to a very close but a second degree. What's what's inexpensive? So once again, it's ne it's always about quality of service, price, mm -hmm. availability. I don't care if it. Yeah, I don't care if it grows from a tree in the ground. If it's good, solid internet and it doesn't cost me a fortune, I'll consider it. You're not worried about the Ruskies spying on you? No, I'm not worried about the Ruskies the or, the, or, or the Kaspersky's. Oh, the Kaspersky's. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. Good luck, internet. That's right. Uh, Facebook Messenger has topped 1 billion, with a B, Android downloads, according to PCMag.com. Messenger's David Marcus posted a photo displaying the Google Play Store's 1 billion download badge with the image likes by colleagues Mark Zuckerberg and Tom Stocky. Facebook and Google are the only two companies with 1 billion plus bragging rights. According to TechCrunch, Messenger joins Facebook and WhatsApp, as well as Gmail, YouTube, Google Search, and Google Maps. Nice emphasis on WhatsApp. WhatsApp! Also, I'm a big fan of the name Tom Stocky. I think it's <laughs> right. You should keep that. Uh, PC World is reporting that Congress is worried that foreign government-owned SSL certificate authority could use phony security certificates to harvest login details from social networks, corporate networks, and email accounts. The U.S. House of Representatives Committee on Energy and Commerce recently sent letters to Apple, Google, Microsoft, and Mozilla with questions about how the backbone of HTTP, I put too many T's in there, HTTPS security could be violated. Uh, in one example, the certificate authority uh, Dignator, is it Dignator? Dig, 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 Diginotar. Diginotar. Diginotar, I don't know. Sure. I live. That's he, what that's what Diginotar sounds like. Great. When you walk by the arcade, it entices you to go in. That's the one, yeah. Uh, it was hacked in 2011, and hundreds of fraudulent certificates were issued, or, or sorry, were issues for Google, Skype, and Yahoo. Uh, there were numerous government-owned CAs across the globe, including China, France, Spain, and Turkey. Uh, I would recommend listeners who maybe uh, listeners or viewers who didn't catch last Wednesday's episode of DTNS when we had on that wonderful professor whose name escapes me because it was hard to pronounce uh, from UCLA and dig into that some because honestly, as I read this, I realized, wait, she she and her group may have the answer to this problem right there. Uh, so worth checking out. Go back and check it out. And that does it for the headlines. We did get some news from you, though. Oh, look at this. 
I think I'm supposed to play this. There you go. Yeah. Listen, Tom, if you're listening right now, I got this under control, buddy. Calm <laughs> down. Keep your text to yourself. Just kidding. He's fine. He's doing just fine. Uh, some news from you. All right. Do you long um, uh, for a simpler time, Brian? Oh, of course. Who doesn't? All right. Do you, uh, well, <laughs> do you believe that's even a thing? Hey, a time when toasters flew and you could reveal, or excuse me, revel in the simple joys of the randomizer? Oh, who, who doesn't? Well, these, uh, this item was submitted by Nate Bob and received a whopping 48 votes on the DTNS subreddit, which is where you can go to submit news from you. Sensing your need for a return to innocence, uh, developer Brian Braun. <laughs> Why is that name familiar? I think I'm thinking of Lloyd Braun from Seinfeld. <laughs> has Serenity now! <laughs> thoughtfully recreated every edition, or excuse me, every original After Dark screensaver, including the iconic flying toasters, if you remember those. I do. Does he have the one with the dude who mows his lawn and it, it, it I, screen I would, saves your screen? I would assume so. Yeah. I, if not, doing it wrong there, buddy. <laughs> uh, the iconic uh, screensaver images are on his GitHub page. Uh, the After Dark screensaver software launched for the Apple Macintosh in 89 and appeared on Windows computers in 91. And I remember that was a huge deal because back then you could only get this weirdness on the Mac. And at the time I was like a PC evangelist. So kind of flipped. But uh, at the time, I thought, ah, we want that. Why can't we have that on PCs? And sure enough, we did, and it crashed a lot, but I didn't care. I had it. So there, was a, there was a year where um, After Dark released a Star Trek trivia question screensaver. That was the year that I, I got to go to Macworld, or one of the years I got to go to Macworld, and that was one of the things I bought. I remember proudly coming back from Macworld with the After Dark Star Trek screensaver. Boy, our values sure have evolved over the years. They? <laughs> they really have. Uh, DJ Sakani shared this AR's tech, or I'm sorry, Ars Technica story covering Verizon's apparent failure to make good on 22 years old promise to Pennsylvania to provide fiber internet or com uh, comparable technology supporting at least 45 megabits to its service area in the state. So far, more than 2 million homes have either slower DSL or wireless service out of 4.2 million in Verizon's service area. The original agreement allowed Verizon to charge higher price phone rates for higher speed broadband. Telecom analyst Bruce Kushnick wrote in the Huffington Post that officials relaxed the requirements over the years, giving up on the 45 megabits per second minimum and allowing Verizon to meet the obligation with wireless instead of with fiber or other wireline technology. Well, I'd sure wish our speeds were as good as everyone promises, but, you know, <laughs> sometimes the future's a little weird. It, uh, it is, yes. Uh, DNS producer Jolly Roger, a.k.a. Roger Chan, really one of my favorite people working with Tom, to be honest. I love mm -hmm. Jenny, too. I love them <laughs> uh, well, both, equally, and with none more than the other. I just want them to say nice things to Tom when he gets back, that's all. Oh, of course. I uh, would like you to know that Ray Niro, one of the lawyers who, I hope I'm saying that right, who uh, pioneered the wave of contingent-free patent litigation, says he's ready to exit the business because, quote, the standalone patent case is dead on arrival, and I don't think we're unique. Ars Technica reports that patent litigation dropped by roughly 20% in 2014. That's great news for a lot of people, podcasters included. Mm -hmm. that, uh, and patent lawsuits by non-practicing entities, meaning you know some hole-in-the-wall location in Texas, <laughs> the company, also known as patent trolls, dropped by nearly 25%. These trolls filed about 3,700 lawsuits in 2013 and 2,800 in 2014. Uh, it's a big drop. With more judges awarding fees to defendants, patent trolling has taken on higher risk. Uh, in one case, Nero and his firm were ordered to pay fees in a patent suit he brought against HTC. The parties were still litigating over the amount, but HTC is seeking $4.1 million. The fee uh, order was a wake-up call, quote-unquote, Nero told Crane's uh, College of Business. I can, take, uh, I can take it once, twice, but I'm going to take it three or four times? No. Why should I? All right, drop the mic, yo. <laughs> hey, not a problem. Right. Yeah. Anyway, here's the good thing I want to say about all that. Uh, this has nothing to do with it. I'm making a terrible transition. The Daily oh, Tech yeah. News Show was nominated in the technology category of the Podcast Academy Awards, which just came out a few minutes ago. So congratulations. Mm -hmm. uh, surely they made that nomination before today's episode aired. And that's it for this. <laughs> I played that in two places. That's fine. Well deserved. Uh, so let's talk about this uh, Spotify thing in a little more detail and how sure. it maybe relates, may or may not relate to Apple Music. It's easy for us as common web citizens to see the announcement Apple made the other day, which looks like a very big play by Apple to 
re-wrangle the music industry in a way that they did perhaps with iTunes back in the day, doing it in, tw in 2015 terms. Um, at least that's what they'd like us to believe. I still think there's things that are very confusing about it, but uh, it does seem to be ba Apple's big play, love them or hate them, it's their next big thing right. with music. And it's, it's easy for us as simple-minded folk <laughs> to see that two days later, Spotify is announcing giant acquisition of new money to help back them by investors and also um, talking about their numbers and how they've increased in numbers and you know, kind of showing their, burying their teeth basically. It's easy to see all of that as maybe a little conspiratorial that they're now on the defensive, that they have to react quickly. I'm not so sure. A lot of this kind of stuff is in the works for a very long time. Uh, you know, could they have announced this two days before Apple did their thing? Probably. Mm -hmm. Was it better to do it after, before? It's not like this stuff just came up. They didn't wake up on Wednesday morning and go, oh, guys, check it out. We got that email back. Looks like <laughs> we got our money. We, which we hadn't been working on for any time at all. This is right. something brand new out of the you know, out of the ether, spontaneous. Sure. It's hard to get the actual story, but they raised $526 million amid this battle with Apple. Uh, and I would argue Spotify, in a lot of ways, won the fight with all the other. Because this is like streaming fight number two. Streaming mm -hmm. fight number one was... All right, Pandora and RDO and everybody else, let's let's go. And they went fisticuffs and ends up, in the end, Spotify kind of winning. Uh, but now they've got this new competition. Overall, how how do you feel about? Well, what what would be your definition of winning? Because Pandora's got just under 80 million users, while Spotify has 60 million on the free and 15 uh, million paid. Well, uh, the, yeah, you, you make a good point. The problem with the the problem with all of it is that these guys are making a play to get free people in, but ultimately their best service is the paid one. It's hooking them in as, as actual paid subscribers, yeah. Whereas Pandora has always ha is always the ad-supported free thing. Do they have a paid thing? They do. Yeah, they have a $5 a month uh, uh, deal with uh, without ads. Now, it still doesn't give you full control over the music and their their library according to this article by um, Wall Street Journal their music library is only 1.5 million songs compared to Spotify's 30 million songs mm. so you could make the argument they won on that on those grounds they an yeah, I think it's like really just a matter of them being around longer right and people kind of hook in and like yeah. radio has been around as long maybe longer I don't have the dates on that but I think it's something like that and why you know they have so much better selection than RDO does I actually kind of like RDO mm -hmm. but, I, but they don't have near the selection that they do some would say oh that's definitely a win in their category but the losers in the Spotify category or if you want to call it a loss are the artists, for the most part, do not like Spotify. Right. Less per song, they're getting less for their work than they have with any other agreements they've had with anybody else. So all that great selection's fine and all, but at, at what cost in terms of, you know, the artist? It's, and it's also an, uh, one, one lower thing for the artist as well, one uh, con against the artist is that because it's so much songs on demand, you don't get as much exposure to stuff that you may like that you don't know about, right? Some bands that you haven't heard before that you get uh, some exposure to. So, um, so Spotify, you know, the, the, one of the reasons that artists uh, probably aren't happy with Spotify is that it's so much on demand. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, you and I haven't had any experience with Apple Music other than just seeing the same keynote, but uh, um, their music library is supposed to be bigger. It's going to be 37 million tracks. It, uh, I don't know if you get songs on demand like you do with Spotify, but their, their, their current radio offerings do the same thing that Pandora does, right, where you say one song you like, and then it gives you recommendations and, and points you to other songs you may like. It does seem to be that way. The only, the, the confu so here's the confusing part. They got up and said, yeah, uh, this, they, they weren't real clear on the streaming, first of all. Mm -hmm. They're kind of like, we have this huge library. It's all your songs you already bought, plus all the other stuff we have. And I took that to mean, well, yeah, you're going to have a streaming service where it will be maybe some human, but also some computer curated list where I say, well, I really like 70s classic rock, and it's going to play that for me when I want it to play it for me. Um, I assume that that's all true, but they were kind of weird about not getting all nitty-gritty about how that stuff actually worked. Instead, they spent a bunch of time focused on an actual live 24-hour worldwide radio station. Right, that's uh, based in, what was it, New York, L.A., and London? Is yeah. that Yeah, Absolutely. which I'm super intrigued about. I mean, if it sounds just like regular pop radio, I'm going to be... I'm, I'm, I can't say I'm going to be surprised because that's... If you're going to do one station, you're going to do the station that appeals to the 
the widest audience. Sure. But it's an interesting play to say we're keeping the human in the in the game by having a radio station play music all day. Well, I don't what music are you playing? What if I don't like everything they're playing in the London time zone and I'm just like, well that's dumb. I'll go back to just listening to whatever I like. Right. To me this is the most and there's less to do with Spotify, but it's the one thing that they're trying to say separates us from the Spotify's of the world because we've got this cute we've got live radio thing, you know? But then I don't it feels like a gimmick. It feels like a thing that isn't actually going to have stuff in it I care about. And if it does, it'll be sporadic because I can't just skip. It's not going to be like, I've got a button in front of me that says, oh, I don't like this song they're playing. Skip. And then the lady in London's going to go, oh, we got to skip from Utah. All right, get it going, guys. Move that song <laughs> along. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, but I kind of like, I think that's that's one of the things that radio does have that um, music streaming services don't, is the that human content, right? Being Even if you hear somebody say, all right, that was uh, Taylor Swift, and now you're going to hear something from uh, The Weeknd. <laughs> You know, at least you're hearing the voice rather than it just going from track to track. So uh, uh, I'm kind of looking forward to hearing what that sounds like. Well, in the face of all of this, Pandora is literally facing the music. Uh, Spotify and Apple being their biggest threats. Pandora stock has fallen nearly 6% so far this week. And investors, they seem to be a little bit nervous that Apple's new music subscription service could steal away Pandora's customers. Um, I think that's probably likely that the, the, the spotlight's not on Pandora like it used to be. And that's unfortunate because I think they've always kind of offered something unique. They offered it early. They were very early in this whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, they blazed a lot of trails, but like it always ends up being. It's like you could say that about the Diamond Rio MP3 player. Blazed a nice <laughs> trail, but Apple came and swallowed you whole. Right. Um, it happens with all sorts of services and stuff. I was thinking about the OnLive game service the other day um, mm -hmm. because I've been lately using the new uh, NVIDIA uh, Shield Android TV device. Which oh, yeah. Right. As a controller, you can stream PC games from any computer in the house, and they have their own on-live type thing. So does PS4 uh, with their service, with PlayStation Now, or is it PlayStation On, whatever um, it is. I think Play... PlayStation Now? I think it's PlayStation Now, right? Because that's the one that... Ugh. So plus, HBO got... Now, HBO Go. I can't keep track of all these things with Now and Go. and Now, Go, and Plus. Those are way overused. Plus, yes, right. <laughs> But but uh, seeing that technology in play is really great, and you just think to yourself, oh, those poor guys at OnLive, they were early, they came, they blazed a yeah. trail, and then they're freaking out of here. And I feel like, I don't know, I feel like Pandora's on that little edge of like, oh, no, you poor guys, you're going you're gonna to get swallowed whole. And it's not just Apple. It's, it's the dominance of Spotify and even other streaming services that are just kind of handing it to them. And sometimes that's sort of the way it goes. They had kind of different reactions, though, these three companies. They've kind of varied. 9to5Mac uh, is reporting that uh, there's a few things said, like, for example, uh, let's see right here. I'm going to find this guy. Uh, RDO had responded to Apple Music in a more formal manner. They put out this actual uh, release that says, Welcome, Apple. Seriously. Welcome to the most exciting, important frontier since the digital music revolution began 16 years ago. We look forward to responsible competition in the massive effort to make music more available and legal for people to enjoy anytime, anywhere. Because what we are doing is increasing the value of music by enhancing each individual experience with music they love. Individual's experience, rather. Welcome to the task. Where well, they're just going head on. It's like, all right, right let's go. <laughs> well, uh, good for them. You yeah. know, you don't want to you don't want to appear like you're cowering down when uh, a competitor introduces something. Yeah. R Rhapsody had some things to say. Hey, guess what, Brian? Rhapsody still exists. What really? <laughs> okay, I wouldn't put money on that. Um but let, real quick here, though, if we are heading into a new phase of the streaming wars, um, it does feel like that titular time of things are shifting. They have been for a mm -hmm. while. They're shifting away from I need to buy, download, store, transfer, own. Almost, It's almost back to the whole physical thing problem again, mm -hmm. where CDs versus digital. Now we're just talking about digitals that I got to keep versus digital in the cloud that I can just access anytime, play a flat rate for I'm personally way into this. You're in a weird position as host of Coverville and as a right. one of the biggest music freaks I know. <laughs> you need to own all that stuff because it's just a different world for you. I have to own stacks of CDs like this, Scott. Yep. Stacks and stacks of CDs. Yep. There's no getting around it for you. No, because uh, I need to be able to, A, own the, the stuff that I'm playing and, and not stream it, plus... Um, controlling that stuff to do a show like Coverville, you don't want to have to rely on, on streaming. You want to have ultimate control of, of fades and 
and when the sun starts, when so it here's stops. what will change for you. This is what will change for you, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Give it another five, ten years. I don't know what it takes, but there will come a point where music will be accessible readily, lightning fast, and there will be no connection issues because connections will be worked out. We'll finally be over that hump where it's just on all the time like electricity because you can't make a show without electricity. Right. 99.9% .9 of the time, your power's up, right? <laughs> That's right. That is correct, yes. Get to that stage where it's up all the time and everything we access, it just we won't even think of it as drives and local versus whatever. It's just going to be everywhere at once when we need it. Listen, five to ten years from now, uh, there's going to be a streaming station coming from my house. <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually, there it is. Uh, Radio.coverville.com is, is, you uh, is, you know, kind nice of that. Plug. Nice plug. I like it. Well, it wasn't even intentional. I know. That's why, that's why I like it. <laughs> anyway, uh, can Apple win the streaming war is our real final question here. Can, can Spotify win it? I feel like the people with the most money often win these wars or the most innovation. In this case, you're probably talking about Apple with the most money and enough stolen ideas and a little, a little, a couple things of their own thrown in there that they probably will end up dominating it. Um, it's, uh, it I think it also depends too on the most uh, robust system or the most robust library. Um, Thirty million to thirty-seven million tracks isn't a huge enough gap that I think one of them. You know, it's a it's it's certainly not a a contest that Apple's running away with with just seven more million. Uh, songs than um, Spotify, but um, what could be beneficial for Apple is the number of people that use iPhones, the number of people that use iTunes to listen to music. If their integration means that somebody doesn't have to have to open a separate application to listen to music, something that they're already using, then um, then I could see that being a benefit. This is, this is the only other thing I would say to that, because I agree with you 100%. I will add this: mm -hmm. there is an army of people using Apple devices and in that ecosystem, for mm -hmm. sure. All right, so you've already got a successful base, but there is a, another army mm -hmm. that, don't, <laughs> that use Windows phones, that use Android phones, that use different right. services and, and a ecosystem. bigger army, right? yeah. And that is a bigger combined army, even individually in some cases. And in that case, just like in the early iPod days, if you want to get everybody and truly have this be huge, huge, mm -hmm. you've got to be willing to step into the other platforms. You just freaking have to. I don't think this can stay, can start, but it can't stay an Apple-only thing if we want to see it really take off. Otherwise, others are going to catch up. The Spotify's of the world, the Googles of the world, they're going to figure out other ways to do it. So if Apple's smart about this, in my opinion, they're going to want to make it as good as they can here, and then later they need to, they need to branch that out. And a lot of people say, have you used iTunes on Windows? It's terrible. Well, I agree, it is terrible, but they still kind of need it. Yeah, I if I were Apple, I would I would call it something else. I wouldn't make, uh, you know, if I'm branching this out to other uh, other platforms, I probably wouldn't make it a subset of iTunes, and I would do something where you can get just the Apple Music as a standalone. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it'd have to be apps, but it'd have to be an app. I can go download it on an Android Android phone, and bam, I've got my service. Right. It right. shouldn't matter where I am. It needs to be what what app, what Microsoft's actually doing now with most of their apps and services. Just go multi-platform and quit trying to force everybody mm -hmm. down your pipe. Right. Right. I mean, it should be available in both. It should be part of iTunes, but then as something separate for. Uh, for people who want something more compact and yeah. individual. Well, and we don't even know how much it'll have to do with iTunes at this point, do we? No, it's true. Uh, my gravestone, by the way, will say, quit trying to force me down your pipe. <laughs> uh, our pick of the day brought to us by a proud executive producer, Gadget Chaser, writes in to say, I've sent, or sorry, I've never sent a pick before, but I'd like to suggest a web service slash app called Kifi. Uh, it is pronounced Kifi, but it's spelled K-I-F-I. Uh, it says this, it's first and foremost a way to curate the web using a Chrome extension. I'm a big fan of Chrome extensions. Mm -hmm. You make libraries for different interests and subjects and then save them to the browser. You can add tags and notes that are searchable throughout the web page and extension. There is also, and he gasps, gasp, is that the word? I should go, <gasps> The social aspect of the service as well. You can uh, you can make your libraries public or private. One of my favorite aspects of the Chrome extension is when I visit a new page, I get a little pop-up in the corner showing me others who have added that site to their library as well. I've tried a lot of pocket type services over the years, but I've found that I'm actually using this one uh, to read it later, likely due to the fact that I can organize things by more than just tags. I have a private library to go to and catch up, and there are easily, uh, they easily move, uh, can move it from either a more permanently public or, pri or private library if I want to keep it or just delete it or forget about it. 
Uh, it sounds like um, it sounds like a, a Pinterest without the uh, the cats, the cupcakes, and the crochet. Uh, you mean all the reasons I don't go to Pinterest? The three, the three C's of Pinterest. Oh, God. <laughs> they were prophesied in the great book. <laughs> uh, send your picks to feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com, and you can get uh, Tom's picks over there at dailytechnewsshow.com slash picks. We got a message of the day sent to us by Hot Branch. Hot Branch. Hot Branch. From Montreal, and he says, Catching up on my backed-up episodes, the mention of Facebook Lite in episode 2508, uh, brought or sorry caught my attention because I used to get or used to replace the regular Facebook app and Messenger on one of my older phones and my pokey 2012 Nexus 7 tablet. I believe I had seen news of the original release of Android Police, who provide a link to download the APK for sideloading. The interface is not as polished, but it uses far fewer resources than the regular app, which in a lot of cases is just fine. Mm -hmm. The Messenger app is integrated, including further storage savings. Iconically, or ironically rather, it wouldn't be iconic at all, I installed <laughs> Facebook Lite on my Nexus 5 and found no improvement in the Zuckerbergian experience. <laughs> Zuckerbergian. Zuckerbergian. Other than to have two notifications of comments or the likes uh, that arrive at different intervals. The Lite version usually delivered the notica notifications first. All this to say Facebook Lite is available to those willing to invest 30 seconds in searching and two minutes for downloading and sideloading. So, in other words, there is a just fine hackery way to get it done. Mm -hmm. so Facebook here. Lite, people. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, that is our attempt to run DTNS for the day wow. it's going on a Wednesday. Uh, I had a lot of fun, though. So that was smooth. Really great. Smooth and easy, right? <laughs> That's things. That's uh, right. right. Brian Ibbett, uh, yes. we should allow you to go first here. Please tell the fine people listening where all the places you can be found are. Well, uh, the big the big two are uh, Coverville.com for the Coverville podcast and the upcoming new and improved cover song search. Um, this thing. Oh, I've had a sneak peek of this. It's so freaking sweet. It's amazing, and it's so robust. And uh, if you're looking for a song and want to know who has covered it, this thing is going to make it so easy and fast. Fast is the key word. Um, that's going to be Coverville.com coming soon. And, uh, of course, frogpants.com slash TMS, the morning stream, where you can hear me um, kind of like you did on this show, uh, sitting there laughing and, and saying absolutely every once in a while to the, the great stuff that Scott uh, Johnson says. You can also hear me on FilmSack, which you can also find there at frogpants.com. Two other shows that are also nominated. Yes, that's oh. right. Well-deserved. Yeah, too bad we can't go in person. We'll be doing Nerdtacular that weekend. Same weekend, yeah. So we're gonna have to. We'll record videos where we accept them, uh, accept the uh, the awards on on behalf. Perfect. We'll have uh, <laughs> there. Tom will be there. Jenny will be there. We'll get lots of video, lots of photos. Very excited. We're like 50 days away, so get, <sighs> get freaking ready. Uh, I think that's gonna do it. I want to thank uh, oh everybody for checking me out. I guess you can go to find me on Twitter at Scott Johnson. You can find me at uh, FrogPants.com. Everything I got going on is around there. About to launch Kickstarter. Keep your eye on that. Uh, check out my webcomic, MyExtraLife.com, and uh, that's it. Oh, one quick note here. Uh, another wonderful DTNS contributor, Veronica Ann Belmont, mm -hmm. Destroyer of Worlds. She is the host of the brand new Engadget show, Ask Veronica. It's actually Dear Veronica. Uh, it was asked Veronica. They changed, or did they change it back? I better make sure. Oh gosh, no, I don't know. I don't think they've changed it. Yeah, it's Dear Veronica. Just one Dear of Veronica. Yes, Dear Veronica. Uh, Dear Veronica is the show. You can use the hashtag Dear Veronica on Twitter to ask her questions, and uh, we'd love it. And you all should add it and check it out. Uh, not just because she's our friend. We'd like it anyway. No, not Maybe. just because she can crush us under her. <laughs> Boot heel, <laughs> if she wanted to. Yeah, she she. That's the thing about her. It's what I like. It's like a Great Dane. They could eat every other dog and person they run into, but they don't. They're sweet animals. <laughs> Veronica could murder me if she wanted. Right. <laughs> Maybe if you call her a Great Dane. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Uh, anyway, big thanks to the five thousand sixty-seven <laughs> patrons that helped make this show possible for Tom and uh, make this show possible at all. Uh, they have contributors just like me, and um, I'm glad you guys are there with me helping this show be uh, rad. I think that's going to probably do it for everybody. Thank you all for being here. Email address, feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Call us, 512-59-DAILY. You can listen to the show live at tunein.alphageekradio.com. Visit the website, dailytechnewsshow.com. Allison Sheridan and Todd Whitehead fill in tomorrow. I'll see you guys again. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com.
Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> and scene. Sweet. <laughs> that was awesome. Good job, guys. Thanks. <laughs> it. We had some fun with it. And yeah. it was snappy. It, like, moved. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's what you want, right? Yeah. I mean, it was a little. This, if I was worried about anything, it was that Brian and I are used to a routine in the morning. We do an hour and a half every day, and it's it, you know you you're used to how your brain fills out that time, and how the rhythm goes. And I was I was worried that a half hour show was going to be hard for us to figure out. I can't how to believe you! You really nailed it. Yeah, no, you funny. really, you totally how got it right on time. Half an hour. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> well, good. I'm glad people liked it. Would you like to hear the awesome titles? That yeah. We did? Sure. Uh, created for this? Of course. Later. All right. Okay. So the leader is, it's at, by the way, it's showbot. Uh, I postponed Coverville for this. <laughs> <laughs> um, number three is <laughs> Kaspersh. What is it? I lost. Uh, I couldn't hear yeah, you. Kaspersh. Glafka. Oh. Uh, and then we've got. <laughs> <laughs> My personal favorite is Toasters Fly Again, which I think is so elegant and simple you know what? that I might just... That's my favorite. That is cute, yeah. yeah. yeah I like that one. That's the one. Again. Oh. Uh, but I will give a special honorable mention to W. Scottis One for his daily tech news show level simplicity of Apple Music versus Spotify Music, round one. <laughs> <laughs> Very simple. So, I think we're going to go with Toasters Fly Again. Yes. Nice. Uh, do you want this file just as what do you want do you want like um, a what did you anything? record it as an AF, AIFF like I work. recorded it raw so I can make it anything we want you can make it a wave okay I can level it totally fine I'll give you a wave that'd be rad get your wave, wave to her wave to her yeah see I'm giving you a wave. a wave wave to Jenny oh so um, hey Jenny is this this is this is already going up to the um, the YouTube the 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 video portion. Explain. Explain. <laughs> Sorry, Brian. I <laughs> know it's so weird. It's like, is that is that my noise? Uh, wait, Roger. Why am I making that sound? <laughs> <laughs> do you mean, uh, Roger? Do you mean, uh, like, am I gonna put it up on the, yes. the YouTube? Yes. Uh, the way I did most of the days. Yeah, I'll take care of that part. Because I don't have the video, so that's why. Yeah, yeah, I'll take care of that part. I'm not going anywhere today. I Yesterday's disaster was mostly motivated by the fact that I had no time. And it was terrible. I have no time. So, yep. And I have the notes in the draft docs so if you want. Oh, yeah, i got to create that. I'll do that while Scott's doing the editing that Tom would normally do. Uh, thanks for done. doing all the things that Tom would normally do. No, it's all good. I um, do this every day. So I'm going to send, I'm going to put a, um, a wave in there. The wave will just be called DTNS wave, and I'll put it in Dropbox, and then I'll send you a link so cool. it uh, goes in. Catch the DTNS wave. Yeah, catch it. Catch it. Fresh. Okay, there it is, DTNS. Oh, yeah, success. It's all it's all done. I copied it over. How big is that file? Uh, it is nearly 800 megabytes, but we live in a modern era. And, uh, Whoa. Well, I'll see you in two hours. <laughs> well, I can do MP3 if it's better. What, what would you prefer? Good night, everybody. No one was in a hurry to hear this thing anyway. <laughs> I know. If oh that God. thing's too big, I can totally give you a smaller file. Could you maybe, yeah, maybe MP3 that while it's going to my drive? Because like, the actual problem is probably not your system where you have fast fiber. Mine is um, Time Warner Cable, if you want to know. Yeah, it's terrible. Oh, uh, yeah. How, uh, yeah. Okay, I'll tell you what. Let's do... I'll do a I'll I'll do an MP3, and I'll do it. Hmm, let's just knock up the sample rate from like 128 to like I'll give you a 256. Okay. That's, That'll probably get that's there. Great quality. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'll just pop this in there. Yeah. Yeah. When when you said wave, my part of me went. You should ask her if she knows how big those get. But then I didn't. <laughs> Uh, I don't think our waves get that big. I don't know what, what your waves are like, but our it waves are that big. If it's, a loss, if it's a lossless wave for half an hour, it should oh, be pretty I, big. Yeah. Huge. But it's okay. I'll just uh, keep my fancy business to myself. It's not. <laughs> All right, I'm going to kill that, and I'm going to move this over. Yeah. And now. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, an MP3. That will only be 64 megabytes, so. Okay, that's about right. Yeah. All right, I'm going to Dropbox link that. I'm putting this in Slack now. <laughs> you said 800 megabytes, and my mind immediately went to Will Ferrell's Harry Carey. <laughs> I don't know why he just started speaking in my head like, whoa, what the heck? <laughs> that was a big fire. That was a big fire. Not again. <laughs> All right, oh you you have the file, madam. Thank you very much, sir. I see it. I'm Welcome. Going to grab it. I have to do it, and I'll can, I'll hang on to these files for the next time Tom yeah. may need me to do it. Um. Oh yeah. On a Wednesday. Oh, it still says it's uploading. All right, I'll be a little more. Patient. Oh, it might. It should have been there by now. I shall be more patient. Should be any. Um, well, hey, if you guys have things you have to do and lives you have to live and all that sort of stuff, uh, I would encourage you to go live them. I'm gonna go live them. I'm gonna live them like I... they're my last hours, my last days, and no. uh, they won't be. But I'm gonna live them like that. that. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, right. No, I got a show to do in the morning. Are you kidding me? No. Oh. Hey, oh, don't God. forget. I got, a, I got, a I got news to too. grab. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, we'll stay out of trouble. Uh, this has been way fun always, and I'll talk to everybody soon. See you. Adios. So.